This next series of questions, we're going to be looking at a percent change. So it's not a single transaction, not a single instant in time, but sort of two portion periods in time that we're talking about. So we went from one extreme to the other. We went from one time to the other. We have an old value. We have a new value, uh, a changing in time. And so this is the concept of percent change or relative change. Um, and for that, there's a formula that we can use. We've got the new value. We're going to subtract the old value. That gives us the amount of the change, we, you know, like an investment or something. But to get the percent of the change, what we do is then divide by what we started with, which is the old value. That's its percent in relationship to the old value. We'll multiply it by 100 to get it to be a percentage. That 100 is always going to be involved somewhere if we're talking about percents. So this is called either, again, percent change or relative change. The amount of change, or uh, we'll see what they call it, they uh, sometimes ask for the absolute change. That's the top part, and we'll highlight that. The important thing is, is notice if the new value is bigger than the old value, we get a positive change. We increased. So it'll be a positive value, indicates an increase. And if the old value was bigger, notice this gives us, this math gives us a negative value. So when we see a negative value, we know we had a decrease. And we'll use that as we develop more of our concepts on uh, percentages. But for now, let's start looking at some example problems and working through them. So here's 23. In 23, uh, now remember in these ones, percent change, there's going to be two time periods. There's going to be an old time and a new time. We're going to take those numbers, and that's really all we need. Um, because the 100 is always going to be there, and our result is going to be a percentage. So we've got a population of a town, and we're told it's increasing, so we know we should have it positive. That's helpful. Uh, we went from 3,850 in 2005 to 5,900 in 2012. The numbers we're interested in is the population changing. Which one's the old one? 3,850, because that was 2005. Which one's the new one? 5,900 because that was 2012. We will always divide by the old and multiply by 100 to turn it to a percentage. Okay, when we do the subtraction, we get uh, 2050, and that's the absolute change, the amount of change, and then we divide by 3850, multiply by 100, and we get as our final percent change that that is a 53.2% change. Just use the calculator. Divide and multiply, just like we've been doing before. Okay. Let's take a look at question 24. In 24, we're given two values. The price of a latte dropped from $3.12 to $3.00. Dropped. We're going to get something negative because it is a decrease. So uh, in this case, it dropped from $3.12 to $3.00. $3.00 is the new value. $3.12 is the old value. And it's always in reference to the old value that we're dividing by. Okay, so. Uh, new minus the old divided by the old. Oops, not equals yet, still multiply by 100. Okay, so we get negative 12 cents in the top divided by 312 times 100. Okay, so just do the subtraction. The absolute change, we found it, it dropped by 12 cents. So this here is the absolute change. Okay. To get the percent change, we continue with the calculation. Negative 0.12 divided by 3.12. Uh, 
and what we and then multiply by 100. What we get is we get a, a negative rate, but what we do is we, we list it as a 3.8% decrease. And just a, We could put a negative here, but if we put a negative, we usually won't say a decrease because then that's a double negative. Um, so a negative decrease, is that an increase? We just don't want to confuse ourselves. If it's a decrease, we just say decrease. If we don't want to say the word decrease, if we cover that up, then we would put the negative 3.8. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at question 25. Okay. So for 25, we've got two figures. And we're told it's increased, so we know we're going to get a positive value. So that helps a lot when we're lining up the new and the old. The annual income increased from 31,000 to 40, 48,000. So 31 it was, it went up to 48. So 48 is the new. 31 is the old. And the old is what always goes into the basement. Yeah, you think basement's where you store the old stuff. Okay, multiply by 100. New minus the old divided by the old. And when we do this calculation, because they also want the absolute change, so we'll do it in steps 48,000 minus 31,000. Wow, that's a nice increase, $17,000. Um, and the old is 31,000 still so with the calculation times 100. So the answer to the absolute change is right here. Okay, so we get it as we're doing the calculation. And now we finish the division, multiplying by 100. And when we do that, we see that uh, Joe, he had a 54.8% divide multiply. Uh, that's his relative increase, the percent increase. Okay, one more for us to consider. Getting the hang of this now, it will really help you with that online homework. 26. So we've got a shirt that was originally marked at $24.95. It rings up at the register at $19.95. So we've got an original price and a price that it rings up. So we see our old and new, right? The old was the original price. $24.95. That's the old. Old always goes into the basement. And the price, the, the newer price that it actually rigged up at is $19.96. Okay. It only wants the percent of the discount, um, so we can do this calculation. And again, almost forgot, always multiply by 100. So we do the subtraction, and we get 4.99. Actually, it's negative, right, because the old value was bigger. And we divide by 24.95, multiply by 100, plug this in our calculator, and we get a decrease negative 20%. Again, you write it that way, or you say it's a 20% discount. That's what was discounted, 20%. So they, so they actually paid 80% of the price. The discount was 20, the price paid was 80. We're gonna start working on those uh, complements of each other as we move forward in this chapter.